Hello everyone, my name is Doomfish, and in today's video I'll be showing you how you can make a three-part combination lock in Minecraft. So, just like in the thumbnail, this is the one that I just constructed, and it's set to the currently open setting, so we can press this button, and our little door over here opens up to our most secure assets. We can move back over here, press the button again to close the door, and then if we were to say rotate the combination locks, even just one of them, to an incorrect one, so we have red, green, and then white on the bottom over here, the button no longer does anything. And so that's true if we change this to two incorrect ones, these are both on white, you can see it does nothing, or to three incorrect ones, just switching this one over to green, you can see that again, the button does nothing until we reset these three locks to the correct positions. Moving back to see the redstone, it's just three of these individual sort of units back here, hooked up to our door control, which is just a T-flip-flop, hooked up to these sticky pistons, and it's pretty simple and ultimately pretty secure, with 1,000 different possible combinations for this lock. So let's just go ahead and I'll show you the materials you're going to need to build this machine. You'll need 27 stairs, 18 pistons, 4 buttons, 1 hopper, 3 droppers, 16 slabs, 3 blocks of redstone, 5 redstone torches, 12 sticky pistons, a comparator, 27 redstone repeaters, 77 redstone dust, and around 3 stacks of solid blocks, as well as 3 of each wool color, so you'll need 10 total wool colors, 3 of each block, or you could use something like concrete or hardened terracotta if that's what you want to go with. But either way, you'll just need 3 of each of 10 colors. So each of these three buttons are going to be controlling the three different combination locks, or the three different rotating colors that we're going to have. To start off, I'll just build this module on the left, and then we can expand that to these other two identical modules. So on this block right here, we're going to go ahead and place down two solid blocks like so behind this button, then go ahead and place down two upward facing pistons on these blocks right here. Behind that, place three temporary blocks out this way, a piston on this one, then we can break those blocks, and place down another piston right here. Now place down seven temporary blocks from this piston right here, up into the air, then go ahead and place down a normal piston facing downwards on the side like so, so it's in this spot right there. Go ahead and place down a solid block right here, a sticky piston facing towards our button this way, then we can go ahead and break all these temporary blocks, place down one normal piston to the side of this block right here, and then a sticky piston right here. Now on this piston right here, we're going to go ahead and place down a stair with the back facing towards the button, place down one more stair right here, again the same orientation, and then two stairs on top of each of those blocks. Now place a solid block here, another stair, and then two stairs just like so, so we should get a structure that looks something like this when you're finished. Now to place in our colored wool, just to use the example from earlier in the video where this one has red on the bottom, this one has green, this one has blue, we're just going to start off by placing our wool in here. You can do it in any color combination that you really want to. I'm just going to do it like this, and this is going to be the correct combination. So whenever the lock is in the correct position, it's going to look like this. Once all of our dyed wool is placed down, we can go underneath this block with the button on it, place down two blocks down here, break the middle one, then go ahead and place down two blocks on the side where our pistons are. Go ahead and place down one temporary block here, two blocks underneath it like so. We can go ahead and break this block, place down redstone dust on these blocks right here, as well as this one. Then a repeater set to one tick, facing that direction, into a sticky piston, facing this way, with a block on its face. Then go ahead and place down one block here, one block here, with a repeater, again set to one tick, facing this direction, into a block, like so. Then go ahead and place down one temporary block here, one block here, we can break this block, place down one block in front of that, one block here, so we get this sort of shape, like so. Place down redstone dust here, here, and here. Then go ahead and place down two more blocks towards these pistons right here, with repeaters on them facing this direction, and each set to one tick. And then finally, one repeater right here, set to three ticks. And when you're finished with that, your whole machine should look something like this, up to this point. Now at the back of the machine, on this repeater right here, go ahead and place down a block on the face like so one block on top of this repeater, and one block behind this piston right here. Then one more block this way, and a temporary block here, and one block right here, and then go ahead and place down redstone dust on each of the blocks you just placed. 
Now we can place down some slabs to carry this charge upwards. To do that, we can just place down a temporary block in front of this redstone dust here. One temporary block here. We can break this block and place down a slab like so. Break this block and then go ahead and tower this up a little bit. The temporary block, slab here, break it. Same thing, this direction, and then one more until you have four slabs placed down here. Now place down some redstone dust on each of the slabs you just placed. Put a block in front of this piece of redstone dust like so. Go ahead and place down three blocks right here. Place down two temporary blocks here, and then two blocks underneath each of those, and two blocks on top of each of those. Then go ahead and break these blocks. Now you can place down some repeaters set to one tick on each of these blocks right here, so they're facing these sticky pistons. Then go ahead and place down blocks here and here, so on top of each of these two pistons. And then some repeaters facing those blocks set to three ticks each. Then place down redstone dust on each of these five blocks right here, so we connect the top part of the circuit to the bottom part. Moving downwards a little bit to this block right here, underneath it place down a block of redstone, then one block here, one block here, move around to the side and place one block to the left right here. Now go ahead and place down a repeater set to one tick right here, place down a block on this stair right here so it's on the same level as this block right here, place down a piece of redstone dust, and go ahead and place down a redstone torch on this side of the block. Now go ahead and place down a block underneath this redstone torch, another one right here, a third one out here, and then a slab on this block right here, and then one more block right here, and then go ahead and place down four pieces of redstone dust on each of these blocks. Now we're done with our first module on the left here, we can go ahead and press this button and see that the whole thing should sort of rotate once. And if we've done it correctly after pressing it the first time, you'll see that this line of redstone is on. If this line is on, this means that this lock is in the incorrect position, and that this redstone dust should be off, this torch should be on, just letting us know that we've got this all correct, and pressing this button nine more times, or the same thing as cycling it back to the correct position, we'll see that this redstone dust over here will go back into the off position. And we can see that right here, now that red is on the bottom again, we can go to the left and see that this whole system is turned off. Now we just need to go ahead and copy down what we have here onto these other two modules. The only thing that's going to be different is whatever color you decide to go with or whatever pattern for the correct position. So you can go ahead and rewind the video a couple minutes and just take a look at the tutorial for this module and just copy it to these ones. But I'll just do a quick overview of the steps in case you don't want to go back. First, place in the sticky pistons and the pistons behind these buttons. And now we can place in our stairs, our solid block, and the colored wool that we want to use. So again, this is going to be for the correct position. So just like in the example at the beginning of the video, we have red here on the left, green in the middle, and blue on the right. But again, you can do whatever you want for this section. Now we can place in our redstone that goes underneath each of these buttons that sort of controls the bottom two sets of pistons. Now we can go ahead and place in our sets of redstone here and here that sort of start connecting the bottom part of the machine to the top sets of pistons. And then we can go ahead and just finish those up by placing in these redstone lines here and these repeaters here. And finally we can place in our redstone block, our repeater, and our torch up here and go ahead and connect our redstone line to the one we made earlier. And again, I would go ahead and just recommend watching the earlier part of the video where we constructed our first module over here. And if you just go ahead and repeat that for the other two modules, you'll be just fine and you'll get exactly what's shown here. So a brief explanation of how each of these modules works is that we have two of these piston feed tapes side by side. One of them is just the colored one, which really has no impact on the actual output of this. And one of them is the one with the stairs and the blocks. So the singular block for the correct output is sort of measured over here. So this just checks if this block is solid or not, and each of these stairs is not a solid block. So when we rotate this away from the correct position, we'll see that this redstone repeater is powering a non-solid block. So we don't get an output here, and so we end up getting a powered line over here. And again, from the beginning of the video, the powered line means that the machine is in the incorrect position. So even though this torch is off and this torch is off, meaning that these right two modules are in the correct position, because this left one is not, and this torch is on, it means that the whole thing is wrong. So again, all three modules have to be in the correct position for you to actually be able to open up your output. 
Now turning our machine back to the correct position, we can go ahead and start on the output of this machine, which is just going to be a simple door opening mechanism like we saw in the beginning of the video. To do that, we're just going to place a torch on the end of this line of redstone right here, go ahead and place down a block underneath this, one block out here, and then another block out this direction like so. Go ahead and place down a piece of redstone here, and then a repeater set to one tick right here. Place a sticky piston facing towards this repeater on the side of this piston right here, and then place a solid block on the face of that piston. Now we can place down three solid blocks coming out of this repeater right here, underneath this block here. Go ahead and place down a solid block right on top of that last block, and then place down two blocks to the right, and then go ahead and place down one repeater facing this direction set to one tick, and another one facing this direction. Now back over here, on the side of this block right here, we're going to place down a slab, like so, and then go ahead and place down one block here, one block here, one block on top of it, place a button on the face of this block right here, then a torch on the back side of that block, and then finally, one piece of redstone dust right here. Next up, we're going to make a T flip-flop right here, so just place down a dropper facing upwards, a dropper facing towards the back of our machine, a hopper facing downwards, so to do that we can just place down a temporary block here, then a hopper, break that block, and finally go ahead and place down a temporary block here, and then place a dropper facing towards our first dropper right here, then we can break this block like so. Now go ahead and place down a block here, one here, and then go ahead and place a comparator facing outwards out of that dropper right here, and the last step is to just go ahead and throw an item into this hopper right here, place down one block on the side of this block right here, then place down a redstone dust here, and then two sticky pistons like so, with blocks on the end of them. And this will be our simple door mechanism that we can just use for the sake of example. Really, we can just take the output from this comparator right here, and you can hook it up to whatever mechanism that you see fit, but in this case we're just using a simple 1x2 piston door. So now our entire mechanism is complete, and it's not really effective since we can just sort of see around the sides, but you can go ahead and cover this up however you see fit. You can place blocks around the side of this, blocks up here covering up this redstone, blocks underneath near our buttons, you get the idea. We can go ahead and remove all this just to get our skeleton back, and we'll see that when all of our colors are in the correct position, we press this button, our door will go ahead and open, and these pistons will retract. Now as long as these pistons are in the correct position, all we have to do is press this button once again, and then our pistons will sort of extend again. And then once you're done doing whatever you need to do, you can just go ahead and randomly press these buttons, or just press them a few times each, and so that when we press the button again, nothing happens on this side. That's pretty much all there is to it. We have our three different locks, totaling up to 1,000 possible color combinations with 10 on each of these locks. And then a simple output right here, just to show you guys what you might consider doing. So we can set this up to a door like we have. We can set it up to a dropper to drop the player a specific item once all this is entered. Or you could do it with whatever other setup you really want. You can make an even bigger piston door or like a sticky block door. But even the simple output will show you guys that this entire mechanism does indeed work. And we can set these combinations up to have a secure system to either lock in or just keep your item safe if you're playing on a multiplayer server. That's going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, go ahead and leave a like on the video, and you can subscribe for more content just like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Peace!